In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Naive Bayes classifier. The Naive Bayes classifier differs from other machine learning algorithms that try and run multiple iterations in order to come to some kind of solution. The Naive Bayes classifier uses Bayesian probabilities and doing that it can classify data and so there's a few advantages to this approach one of them being it's extremely fast because again it doesn't have to do any convergence it just computes probabilities it is interpretable interpretable so a big problem in machine learning algorithms right now is that we don't necessarily understand how they are making their predictions and for things like insurance well or credit ratings you are legally obligated to show how you select individuals I guess and the other benefit is it doesn't require any hyperparameter tuning and so there aren't any knobs that you have to play with to get the optimal values um, you'll tend to use Naive Bayes Classifier when you have A, lots of features, and B, that the Naive assumption actually holds, which we'll get into later. So a bit of background for those of you who might not be that familiar with statistics. So essentially, uh, the a conditional probability is a probability that depends on a event that occurred before and so suppose that we had the scenario where we flipped the coin well the probability of getting a heads would be 50% but the probability of getting two heads in a row would be 50% times 50% and that would give us 25% but conditional probabilities don't exactly work that way and a good example of that would be picking a card from a deck of cards. So the standard deck of cards has 52 cards. And so the probability of, that should be 26, I should change that. But the probability of getting a black card would be 50%, right? Because half are red and half are black. But then the probability of getting two black cards in a row is actually different because now, excuse me, the card is no longer in the deck. So now it's actually 25 over 51, which is 0 0.49. And so the probability of getting two black cards in a row is 50% times 49%. And then we get roughly 24.5%. And so Bayes' theorem builds on top of conditional probabilities. It's particularly useful when you know your probability of A, probability of B, and then the probability of B given A. So a common um, example of that would be when you're trying to uh, test the occurrence of a rare disease. So to tell if your test is effective, I guess. So let's say we have a test and 99% of sick patients will test positive, 99% of healthy patients will test negative. So Bayes' theorem tells us that the probability of a person being sick, given that they tested positive, is the probability that they are, that they tested pro uh, positive, given that they're sick, times the probability that they're sick divided by the probability that they tested positive, given that they're sick, multiplied by the probability that they're sick, and the probability that they tested positive, given that they're not sick, times the probability that they're not sick. So going back to our example, the probability that they are sick, I think I wrote it right here, so it infects 1% of the population, so the probability that they're sick is 1%. And then the probability that they're not sick would just be one minus that, which is 99%. 
the information right here gives us that 99% of sick patients will test positive, which is right here. And then again, we just do one minus that to give us 1% for this. And so we get the probability that they are sick given that they tested positive is 50%. And so we can actually use the uh, Bayes' theorem in order to construct a spam filter. And whenever we're looking for individual words, it's pretty simple. So let's say that we build a spam filter that will classify email as spam or not, depending on the occurrence of a word. And so our training set in this example would be all uh, a bunch of emails that we know are spam. And then we look through those emails for words. And a common word that would be, uh, that would tell us whether an email is spam or not is Viagra. And so looking at this formula right here, the probability that a email is spam given that it contains a word, is the probability that the word is in the email given it's spam, so that's looking at our training set, times the probability that, it, that the email is spam, divided by the probability of the occurrence of the word. And so, using this formula, we would classify an email as spam or not, depending on whether it contained the word Viagra. And uh, so, yeah, our, our probability of uh, an email being spam is the number of emails that are classified as spam. And then the probability of ham, which is not spam, is the number of emails that are classified as not spam. The probability of a word given uh, that it's spam is the number of spam emails that contain the word and the probability of the word given that it's ham number of non-spam emails given that contain the word and uh, Yeah, so now When uh, people we, we call it naive because we make an assumption and so the way it works is sometimes or in the vast majority of cases, it's not enough to classify an email as spam or not given that it contains a single word. Um, most words are harmless in themselves. It's only when they're used in conjunction with each other. So one of the examples I wrote here is that if we classified all the emails that contain the word girl as spam, well then you would end up classifying your daughter's soccer team emails as spam which is not what we want. Um, ideally, we'd be able to look at sentences. So uh, attractive girls in your area, that would probably be spam. And so when we actually go to compute this, in order to make the math easier, we make an assumption. And the assumption is that the individual words, right, because these individual words are our features, um, the assumption is that they're independent. and Whenever something is independent, if we go back to uh, Bayes' theorem right here, then the probability goes back to being a multiplication of one another. So uh, coin flips are independent, and that's why we can just multiply the two. But drawing uh, black cards from a deck, those are dependent because depending on the result of the first draw, well, that will change the probability of the second, right? So if on our first draw we drew a red card, well, then we would still have 26 black cards in the deck. And so going back here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wrote it right there. So, yeah, you have your conditional probability, and then it just becomes a multiplication, and it makes the math a lot easier. So uh, the formula right here, what it's saying is the probability that an email is spam given that it contains two words, A and B. And uh, all we need to do in this case is you can see that we just multiply the, excuse me, the probability 
that uh, yeah, A given spam and then B given spam, multiplied by spam, blah, blah. All right, so let's get into some code here. And to start off, we're gonna be importing the necessary libraries. So fetch 20 news groups, that is a corpus of documents and they are broken up into 20 categories, 20 news groups. We have the TFIDF vectorizer, which I made a video about previously, if you're not familiar with that. We have the multinomial naive Bayes classifier, and then we have metrics. So we'll go ahead and import these. We'll go ahead and fetch that or download it. And so if I print the target names, these are all the different categories for the news groups. And then if we take a look at the shape here, you can see that we have over 11,000 documents. If we take a look at the first one right here, you can see they're kind of like this format. So it's almost as if they're emails where they have a from a subject and then the actual content right here. And so to make this simpler, we're only gonna end up using four categories. So we're gonna use uh, atheism, religion, computer graphics, and then space. So we'll go ahead and create our training and test sets using that. So again, the uh, TF IDF vectorizer will essentially break up our documents into words and then it will rank those words depending on their occurrence and uh, their semantic value, I guess. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll use our uh, multinomial naive blaze classifier. We use multinomial because we have multiple categories. And so we'll go ahead and train our data off that. And then we can use it to make predictions on our test set. And uh, let's go ahead and print the score here. All right, so you can see it gets an accuracy of 80%, which um, is pretty good. And I don't know if you guys noticed as well, it was pretty much um, instantaneous. So if any of you have already played with neural networks, like this is insanely fast, right? Just because it, it doesn't have to do any iterations, it just computes probabilities and then determines what category they fall in depending on that. And just to highlight an example, I wrote a function here. And so uh, we can check its prediction for a given sentence. So for example, if I wanted to predict the category of determining the screen resolution, we could pass that to this function. And then you can see that it successfully categorized it as computer graphics. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments.